So uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, my name is Ed Yaptindillian. Um, I am a software engineer uh, on the Java team at Google, and I'll be giving this talk about detecting argument selection defects. Um, so let's start with an exercise for the audience. Um, so if you look at this code snippet, um, do you see anything wrong with it? Um, so I've got a function declaration, uh, get user. It takes uh, two parameters, a company ID and a user ID, uh, and then I have a call site. Do uh, you see anything wrong with this? What's wrong with it? Right, so you can just look at this and tell they've passed uh, the arguments at the call site in the wrong order. And how can you tell it's wrong? Based on the names, right? Uh, you don't have to know anything about the code or what it does. Uh, you can just look at the names and whether they are similar just lexically, and you can guess with a pretty good chance of being correct uh, that this code is incorrect. Um, so, uh, you know, we looked for um, proof that these problems actually exist uh, before we went down this path of building a check for it. Um, so we started out by looking at um, the revision history uh, of Google's code base. Um, so we searched the commit history um, for a set of terms that include um, argument or parameter and uh, something about swapping them or incorrect. Um, and we manually inspected those and we found 84 argument related defects uh, that were fixed across 23 revisions. Um, they occur approximately once in every 1.5 million commits. These are just the ones we found, but the takeaway here is that they're pretty rare. Um, 16 of these defects were tagged with a bug report. Um, six of those bug reports were marked uh, priority one, which means important, and one of them was marked as priority zero, which is the highest priority, and that means that you should drop everything and fix this immediately. Um, so these bugs are rare, but they're real, um, and some of them are actually very important. Um, also, as part of this work, um, we found instances of this bug in mature open source software projects. Um, so we found an example in concurrent hash map in the JDK. Um, we found one in ASM, which is a bytecode rewriting library that's very widely used. Uh, we went, found one in the MySQL JDBC driver, uh, and we went, found another one in OpenJDK and SACS document serializer. Uh, we reported all of these upstream. Uh, we got a nice quote from, from Doug Lee. He said, well, that's definitely embarrassing. Um, the first three have already been fixed. Uh, the fourth one is waiting to be verified. Um, so what can we do about these kinds of bugs? Um, there's been previous work in the academic literature uh, that's looked at using lexical similarity to detect this kind of bug. Um, there was an ISTA 2011 paper uh, that we call Order that looked at uh, different permutations of the existing arguments uh, to a function call. Uh, and then there was a paper at ICSI last year uh, where uh, they did the same sort of lexical analysis, but they pulled uh, other potential identifiers or expressions out of scope. Uh, and also added those to the, the candidate set of things they considered. Um, so both of these looked very applicable to our problem, and we thought, well, let's just re-implement them, uh, and we'll have a, a check, and we can knock this off in a month. Um, and it uh, didn't work that way. <laughs> we found that when we re-implemented these algorithms, uh, the true positive rate was really low, like less than 1%, uh, and not near what was reported in the work. Uh, there are a number of reasons that um, we, we couldn't reproduce the result, and we talk about them at great length in the paper, uh, but I don't have time to give that, do that justice here, so please go look at the paper. Um, so given this result, we went back to first principles, and we built a check uh, that we could actually deploy at Google. Um, our check detected um, 2,305 bugs in Google's code base. Um, we have an 85% true positive rate, uh, when we uh, evaluated the check over uh, our checked in code. Um, and then when we rolled this out as part of the code review process, um, our user feedback is uh, positive 93% of the time. Um, so the contributions of this work are, uh, we first provide a systematic approach for selecting the components of one of these checks. Um, so we provide you a framework for sort of substituting your own ideas in and evaluating them on some existing corpus, and then uh, some rigorous way for choosing uh, the, best, uh, the best components to produce the best check in the end. Um, we provide a set of heuristics. Uh, the heuristics are key uh, to getting our uh, 
false positive rate down. Um, it bumps the true positive rate for only 10% uh, up to 85. Uh, so it makes it something we can actually deploy. Um, and finally, we report on results from deploying the static checker into the actual development workflow at Google. So going beyond just analyzing an existing corpus of code, but actually analyzing uh, proposed patches uh, and seeing how users respond to them. Okay, so let's talk about um, how we built uh, this check and the components of the check. Um, so based on prior work, uh, we sort of divided uh, the check into four components. So first we had to decide how to extract uh, names out of just arbitrary expressions uh, that you might see in the program. Um, second, we needed a distance function, some sort of lexical similarity metric. Uh, and we wanted to choose a good one because that's sort of the core part of the algorithm. Um, third, we had to decide when do we actually suggest uh, a different permutation of these arguments. How much better does it have to be? How do we make that evaluation out of the distance function and the names that we have? Um, and finally, we had to define some heuristics um, to eliminate false positives and you know, essentially to, to find the places where people really did intend uh, to swap these arguments. And I'll talk more about that on that slide. Um, so I have a running example uh, for this section. Uh, suppose I have a, a class representing a bitmap, like an image. Um, when I construct the bitmap, uh, I give it two parameters, both integers. Um, there's a width in pixels, width px, uh, and there's a height in pixels, height px. Um, and then I have a call site where I'm constructing a bitmap from some existing bitmap, um, and the bitmap class has uh, accessor methods, get height, get width, and as usual, I've, I've swapped these. Um, so the first question here is, uh, how do I go from an arbitrary expression like this bitmap uh, dot get height uh, and convert that into a name that it, then I can, I can feed into my distance function? Um, so here, what we did was based on prior work. Um, we use the function name and we strip these sort of meaningless, uh, meaningless components of the function name. So in Java, it's, it's common to prefix your accessor with get. So we have sort of a hard-coded rule for that. Um, so bitmap.getHeight just turns into uh, height. Uh, we also normalize to lowercase. Um, and get width turns into width. Um, these were, many of these were based in prior work, but there turned out to be many corner cases that we had to, um, we had to address as well that weren't addressed in prior work. And we talk about you know, a lot of the corner cases in the, uh, in the paper. Uh, but that's the core of the idea. Um, the second question is uh, how we need some distance function to determine how similar the names are. Um, so given a, a comparison like um, width px and height, you would hope that your distance function says that those are very far apart. And when you compare width px and width, uh, that those are pretty similar. Um, so um, we uh, evaluated four candidate distance functions. Uh, we ended up using needleman Wunsch uh, distance, which is an edit distance metric that's used to align protein sequences. Um, we tested uh, the ones from prior work, and uh, this performed better um, in our uh, analysis of our code base. Uh, so that's what we ended up with. Um, third, we had to have some sort of decision procedure. So uh, given this distance, distance metric um, and some particular call site and declaration, uh, should we actually suggest swapping these things? Um, and the way we do this is by considering a, an entire permutation of arguments at, at once. Um, so initially we, we compared each potential swap independently, uh, but we found that that produced a whole lot of false positives. Uh, you would end up in cases where you would just duplicate an argument and pass the same thing twice into the function, and that was clearly wrong. Um, so we ended up um, evaluating an entire permutation of arguments uh, together. Um, so we look, so in this case, we're summing over uh, the each position. I is the position uh, in the uh, call to the function. So we, um, the, the distance uh, for the original argument, we subtract the distance for the proposed argument. We sum them across all the arguments. We divide by the total number of uh, arguments there are, which is n. Um, then we look, we, we have a threshold. And the threshold was experimentally chosen. Uh, we chose it at 0.6 to minimize false positives. Um, 
uh, and then finally, uh, we had to add heuristics to weed out uh, false positives. Um, so consider, consider this case. Uh, so I have a call site. I'm in a function called rotate. And I give it a bitmap. Uh, and then I return a new bitmap uh, where I've swapped the arguments. Uh, again, just from, from looking at the code, uh, you can probably guess that the programmer intended to do this. Um, so we encode a set of heuristics to try to catch places like this. So we look at places where you are inside a function called rotate or flip or invert or something like that. Um, we have another heuristic uh, where if we, uh, if you are in a, um, let's say you're in an if statement and in both branches of the if there, there are two uh, calls to this constructor and if you swap them you're going to end up with the same call on both sides of the if. You're probably wrong there because you probably intended to do something different on the two branches. Um, there are a few other heuristics. Um, these sort of structural heuristics are novel from our work uh, and altogether they take the, um, the true positive rate from very low uh, to 85%. Oh yeah, so, yeah, so the context here tells us the swap is intentional and our heuristics encode that. Okay, so let's talk about our results. Um, so we implemented a static check uh, using these components uh, in error-prone, which is uh, Google's static analysis tool for Java code. Um, it's open source, it's on GitHub, uh, you can go check it out. There are a whole bunch of other patterns, but this is, this is the one we did for this paper. Um, we ran this checker over um, all of Google's checked in code. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about what that corpus looks like in a second. Um, but we looked for existing instances of this bug. Um, and then we also integrated this checker into Google's code review system uh, using a system called Tricorder that there's a 2015 ICSI paper about. Okay, um, so for the checked in code, uh, we ran the checker over um, some large Java code bases. Um, 200 million lines of the uh, the corpus were Google authored, and 10 million were non-Google authored. They were third-party code. Uh, they're mostly open source code. Uh, and the reason we separated out these uh, corpuses was we wanted to make sure that our result um, held uh, even for non-Google authored code. So it holds for open source code, and it, it's a result that the research community can um, have some confidence in. And we did find that our result holds. Um, across both of these corpuses, we found a total of about 2,300 uh, true positives um, when we set the thresholds fairly fairly high to find a lot. Uh, when we set the thresholds to minimize the false positives, we ended up with 459 true positives uh, and 78 false positives. Um, so we had an 85% true positive rate. Um, the interesting bit here was that uh, when we analyzed this checked in code, many of the bugs we found were not very impactful. So there's this survivor effect of if you have a mature code base, um, the bugs that are sort of left in it tend not to be things that, that manifest commonly or visibly. Um, so for example, uh, the concurrent hash map bug, bug that I mentioned uh, on one of the first slides, uh, it turned out that the, um, the order of the arguments in a parameter, in a, in a function declaration were swapped, but then at all the call sites, they were swapped in an equal and opposite way. <laughs> uh, so you know, Doug said that's embarrassing, but in practice, there were, there were no actual uh, sort of correctness issues uh, for, from using the code that a user could see. Um, the, second, the second place you see these things are in rarely taken code paths. So in the ASM bug uh, I mentioned, um, we reported it to the uh, upstream maintainers. They said, well, yeah, that's a real problem, but it's been there for 13 years and apparently no one just, no one does that. <laughs> um, so this is, a, this is a problem when you're, you're trying to do one of these uh, bug detection uh, papers and all you have to look at are uh, existing code bases. Um, so we deployed uh, this check into the developer workflow at Google uh, and it analyzes uh, proposed patches to the code base. So in that case we would expect to find better results. We would expect to find real bugs. Um, and uh, that turned out to be the case. So people were, were generally happy when they saw our analysis in the code review tool. So these are, are snippets of human comments um, on the, uh, the findings that we inject into the code review. Um, so the first per the, the names have been sanitized to uh, protect the innocent. But you know, this first person, uh, first person says this is a nice catch. Uh, the second one says that's one slick error prone, which our team was really happy about. Uh, the second one is also really nice because 
points out that there's no unit test that would have found this. And then the, the person uh, who was proposing the change actually went and added a unit test as a result of getting uh, this static finding. So we not only improved the quality of the production code, but we also improved the quality of the tests. Uh, so that was really nice. Um, as part of the tricorder system, uh, tricorder um, collects statistics on how uh, users respond to findings. So users uh, have three possible ways to respond to a finding, that, uh, a robot finding that they get in their code review. Um, the reviewer can click please fix, and that tells the reviewee that this is a real problem uh, and you need to fix it or I'm not gonna accept your patch. Um, the reviewee can click uh, apply fix, um, which takes our suggested diff and just applies it directly in their client. So that's also a signal of uh, they, they agree with the thing that we uh, pointed out and proposed. And finally, either the reviewer or the reviewee can click not useful. Um, and that means that they disagreed uh, with our finding. Um, maybe it was a false positive. Uh, maybe they think it wasn't worth their time to fix. Uh, basically, it's, they, they just disagree with it for one reason or another. Um, we aim for a threshold of at most 10% not useful clicks, and we're well below that. So over the last three months, uh, we've had a 7% not useful rate, which is pretty good. Um, we uh, get about 40 positive clicks a month. We're not sure why the results were lower in September, uh, but at least for July and August, we were seeing about 40, uh, 40 positive actions taken a month. Um, so the, the feedback has been pretty positive. Um, uh, so this work actually spawned a whole bunch of follow-up work uh, that we have sort of partially done. Uh, so one thing there were uh, certain Java APIs that were particularly prone to this kind of bug. Um, and the first one is very common. So JUnit is a, a, a unit testing library for, uh, for Java code. It's, it's widely used, it's everywhere. Um, and they provide an assert equals method and uh, it takes uh, two objects, an expected and an actual, in that order. If you get it wrong, uh, you get a bad error message when it fails. Um, but most of the time you get it right because you wrote your unit test correctly. Um, so people get this wrong all the time. Uh, we wrote a specific check for that library uh, where we can be uh, much stricter about what we allow you to do because we understand the semantics of the library. So in a unit test, uh, the thing that you expect is usually something like a constant or something that you've uh, like created in that function, in that unit test. Uh, so we can be much, more, uh, much tighter about uh, what our analysis looks for and we can have a higher uh, true positive rate. Uh, we have a second one for auto value, which is a particular library, particular library that's widely used inside. Um, the second uh, sort of line of follow-up work um, has been about named parameters for Java. So other languages let you tag arguments with the name of the parameter that they go with, but you can't do this in Java. Um, when, we were, uh, when we were looking at the results from analyzing our code base, we found that people were inserting comments that looked like that. Uh, so if they were intentionally swapping these arguments, uh, they, were, they were putting a note in there to readers of the code that like, yes, I really intended to do this. Um, so we ended up writing another check that sort of simulates named parameters for Java. Uh, and if you write your comment in this form, uh, then we check that the, the name that you put in the comment actually matches the parameter name and we fail your build if you're wrong. Um, and we've seen some moderate uptake of that. Um, and finally, the, the third piece of follow-up work um, has been looking at actually getting uh, named parameters into the Java language. Um, and while we're at it, why not just do optional and default uh, parameters at the same time? Um, so we're sort of, uh, we're trying to draft a JEP, a JDK enhancement proposal, uh, and we'll pitch it to upstream, and maybe we can convince them to, to let us do it. Um, so in conclusion, uh, we've defined a systematic approach for selecting the components of one of these lexical similarity-based static checks. Um, we've provided a set of heuristics that greatly reduce the false positive rate. Um, and we've deployed this check on proposed patches during the uh, developer workflow at Google. And we've re reported results from the field. Um, so I wanted to point out, you, you, can, you can try this out. Uh, I mentioned that error-prone is open source. Uh, it's up on GitHub. Um, you can check it out and run it over your own Java projects. Um, we went through the artifact evaluation process, which I think is a great, a great thing that the uh, community has started to do in recent years. 
Um, so you can get our artifact at that DOI link. Uh, that's also in, the, the DOI link is also in the paper, so you can find it there as well. Um, and then finally, I want to uh, that um, most of this work was done by a visiting faculty member on our team. Um, if anyone's interested in talking about the visiting faculty program at Google, I'm happy to, to talk to you. So um, come find me after the talk or send me an email um, at my address in the paper. All right? Thank you. Any questions? <laughs>